is that Shorty Kellums has sold the Silver Dollar City Hotel. No. Yep. For an undisclosed sum. But nothing about Alverna's daughters getting married. Don't see it yet. Oh, Granny, guess who's here? Mr. Kellums. Shorty? Yes, sir. Just drove through the front gate. Recognized his car. You mean he drove all the way to California? Well, you can't blame him for that, Granny. Shorty's sure got one of the finest automobiles in the hills. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Kellens. Howdy, General. I've been in here so long, I can't hardly get out. How are you, General? Oh, it's been a good idea. We didn't know you was coming out here. <laughs> I didn't know it myself. You see, I sold out back home, and I just decided to cut loose and have myself a fling. Hey, we're good for you. I said to myself, I said, Shorty, I said, where's the most exciting place in the whole country? Quick as a flash, the answer come to me. Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> so I jumped in the car and took off. But, but this is Beverly Hills, California. Yeah, I made a wrong turn at Blue Eye. <laughs> Ellie, honey, we got company. Go put on a pretty dress. Yes, sir, Pop. Shorty Kellum. Granny, how are you? Shorty, you rascal. Why didn't you let us know you was coming? I didn't. He didn't know he was going to come out here, Uncle Jed. That's right. I started. He started to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's right. And I made, <laughs> he made the wrong turn at Blue Eye. That's, That's right. In the first, and the first thing you knew, he was halfway here. That's right. So I just, he just decided to come out here and see us. <laughs> General, why don't you let Mr. Kellums tell the story? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kellum. Go ahead. I think we pretty well covered it, Jethro. <laughs> so come on in, Shorty. Jethro and me will fetch your stuff. Now wait, now wait. Hold on. I ain't aiming to move in, won't you? I'm going to stay at one of them hotels. You ain't going to do no such thing. Now you fetch in his bags and I'll get Biddle started. But, Granny, no. Now don't argue. We won't have it no other way. Get out. I'll have to unlock that. I got my fortune in there. <laughs> fortune, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I sold out lock, stock, and barrel back home. My hotel, my silver mine, my house, and land, and everything except my car. As the fellow says, I got all my money tied up in cash. <laughs> Must be considerable. Yeah. I can live like a king for the rest of my life on what's in that bag. Thirteen hundred and eighty dollars. <laughs> You boys enjoy your coffee. I'm going to the root cellar and get a jar of my special homemade pickle pawpaws. Mm -hmm. Pickle pawpaws. <laughs> I think it's safe for you to unchain yourself from your money now. I reckon it would make it easier to sauce some coffee. <laughs> up out here. All my life, I won't see Hollywood. It's a very right interesting place. <laughs> You've been out here going on to eight years now. That's right. You must know your way around pretty good. I reckon. How about taking me with you tonight? Where to? The party. What party? The wild party. <laughs> what wild party? The wild Hollywood party. <laughs> All right, I'll take you. I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> Where's it going to be? Don't you know? I ain't never been to one. You never been to a wild Hollywood party where the movie stars cuts loose and dances on the table and jumps in the swimming pool with their clothes on and sprawls around on pillars while Theta Berry drops grapes in your mouth? Nope. You Josh and me. No, oh, ain't it? Jed, you're forgetting we was boys together. We run a pretty fast crowd and you were the fastest. Me? You was the wildest girl chasing this rascal in the whole county. Oh, I was not. Somebody in our crowd was. How about you? That's who it was. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Shorty, but I just ain't much of a party-going fellow. Well, Mr. Jones, put your suitcase upstairs in the bedroom, right next to Uncle Jed's. Well, thank you, Jethro. Oh, here's one I forgot. <laughs> Hold on, Jethro, you're towing Shorty. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelms. 
How come you got this here suitcase fastened to your chair? Well, I have savings in there, a fortune. Oh. Well, here. <laughs> Jordy, how about I take that upstairs and put it in your room? Good idea, Jed. I've got enough cash on me the last week, too. You'll be safe there. Uh, Mr. Kellams? What do you aim to do with all that money? Aim to kick up my heels. Have a high old time. Burn the cattle at both ends. Live a little. <laughs> You'll man after my own heart. That's what money's for. To have fun. Jethro, I bet you know your way around this town, don't you? Do I? You's talking to a genuine Hollywood playboy. <laughs> Say, Jethro, would you take me to a wild Hollywood party? <laughs> yeah. When you want to go? Sooner the better. What about right now? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> oh, ready? Don't hold supper for us. We's going out. We might not get home till late. We might not get home to breakfast. We might not get home at all. Let's go. Where, Come on. where are you going? We's going to a wild Hollywood party. Where's it going to be? Well, just a second. Oh, where's it going to be? <laughs> you don't know? Heck no. This is the first one I've ever been invited to. <laughs> Never mind. Forget it. Well, don't you want to go? No, I think I'll settle for pickled pawpaws. I'm all partied out. <laughs> seen this financial statement? Jed Clampett's fortune is now in excess of $90 million. Well, that should make you very happy. Happy? I'm delirious. Drive me up there so I can tell him the good news. Right, Chief? You know, I had to take Mr. Clampett a gift by way of celebration. We'll stop and pick up a box of cigars. Thanks for the ride, Shorty. Shorty, thank you, Mr. Kellum. Yeah, thanks a lot. What do you think of Beverly Hills, Shorty? Ain't a bad little town at all. Some of them hotels we see in real hoppers. Even bigger than the Silver Dollar City Hotel, huh? Bigger than Silver Dollar City. <laughs> hey! <laughs> was that door unlocked all the time we was gone? Sure, Shorty. My money! My fortune! My life savings! Every penny I got in the world! <laughs> What's the matter with Shorty? He's afraid somebody took his money whilst we was gone. It'd be a lot better if he put that money in a safe place, like Mr. Drydale's bank. Or better yet, my root cellar. You think that's safer than the bank, Bo? Jed, I've got goat cheese that's been in that cellar for eight years. Nobody ain't ever touched it. Nobody can get close to it. <laughs> the bag's here. Now I've got to check and see if my money's been took. What's going on? Shorty's fixing to count his money. Jethro. You get a shotgun and stand guard at your front door. Ellie Mae, you take the back door. Jed, you cover the windows. You ready? I think you'll be safe. Go ahead. Okay, I'll change it. Danger explosives. Don't be nervous. Get the trick to scare off bandits and such. <laughs> Beware rattlesnakes. Just another trick. Yep, it's there. <laughs> this is the money I got from a hotel. Mary Herschel bought that. And this is the money I got from a silver mine. Sold out to a syndicate from Reed Springs. Fred Syndicate. <laughs> Don't believe I know, Fred. You make a fortune out of that silver mine. Plans to hide a still in there and sell moonshine. Jody, did you ever take any silver out of that mine? Just once. Found a spoon somebody dropped. <laughs> this year's the money I got from a house and land. Looks like you got yourself a dandy nest egg. You ain't seen the big money yet. Papa gave me this, 19 and 29, just before the big crash, and said, son, hide that away. So it's been hidden in a silver mine ever since. He must have known the crash was coming. He did. That man always did have his ear to the ground. Yep, had dirty ears, but he never went broke. <laughs> <laughs> you young'uns ain't never seen money this size. Look at the difference. That's when a dollar was a dollar. Uh, how many of them big bills you got, Mr. Kellum? Two hundred. I'll see who's at the door. Don't open it till I get my money hit. <laughs> 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 
all-time human being. Allow me to present you with this box of cigars. Oh, thank you. What's the occasion? Wait till you hear. Now listen to this. Mr. Clampett, at this moment, you have now got $90 million. Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Jethro. Hey, Jethro, guess what I got? What? A box of cigars. <laughs> what I got there? <laughs> You've also got $90 million. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> I don't think your Uncle Jed realizes how much $90 million is. Oh, I'll cipher it for you, Uncle Jed. Uh, $90 million. That's it's uh, a nine and a not comma. Not, not, not comma. Not, not, not dot. Not, not. Boy, really ciphers, don't he? He's a whiz. Uncle Jed, now that you got all these millions, uh, how about raising my allowance a little? Uh, it's awful hard for a Hollywood playboy to get by on 50 cents a week. <laughs> <laughs> Granny likes to see you in the kitchen. Fine, Shorty. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, you remember Shorty Kellams who run the Silver Dollar City Hotel? Sure, how are you? Mr. Clabbett, I would like to discuss some investments. Well, uh, maybe later. Right now, I'd appreciate it if you'd talk to Shorty about him putting some money in your bank. Tell you the truth, Mr. Drysdale, I don't trust bank. Good, see you later. <laughs> My papa had to took his money out of the bank before the crash of 29. I wouldn't have this big money I got. Swell. When Mr. Kelm says big money, he means really big money. You mean the kind of money your Uncle Jed has? Shucks, no. Mr. Kellum's money makes Uncle Jed's look like nothing. <laughs> Mr. Kellum, where did you get this big money? <laughs> Took it out of my silver mine. You own a silver mine? I did. Sold out to a syndicate. After you took out a fortune? You bet you. Million? Couple of hundred? Mr. Kellum, how would you like to take a personally conducted tour of the finest, most modern, safest bank in Beverly Hills? Hmm? To tell you the truth, Mr. Drysdale, I wouldn't walk across the street to see it. <laughs> Let me down! Quick, Miss Hathaway, to the bank! Chief, what's going on here? I have found a new Mr. Wonderful! <laughs> Jed, make him put me down. I don't want to see his bank. You love it, Mr. Kellum. It's beautiful, just like your money. <laughs> Open the car door, Miss Hathaway. Jed, make him turn me loose. He's got a death grip on me. Turn him loose, Mr. Drysdale. Of course, Mr. Crampton. <laughs> oh, now, now you, do you promise not to talk to any other banker? I do. Do you promise to trust your money to no one else? I do. In sickness and in health, for richer or poorer, till death do us part? Chief, you are not marrying him. <laughs> Maybe not, but those vows are still binding. You're all witnesses. Turn him loose, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> yeah, best get in the house. That rascal's got a board loose in his eye. Probably my fault, Shorty. I asked him to take care of your money, and that word all seemed to set him off. <laughs> Your behavior was outrageous. The, the, the way you carried on over that little hotel clerk. That little hotel clerk happens to be the Silver King of Silver Dollar City. He is worth $200 million. $200 million? And that's just what he took out of the silver mine. I believe it. I can believe it. I just can't get my hands on it. <laughs> Granny says she's all invited for visits. Oh, and Mr. Drysdale? Sure would appreciate it if you try to talk Uncle Jed into raising my allowance. Well, it's a deal. If you talk Mr. Kellums into coming down to see me at my bank. The only thing he wants to see is a wild Hollywood party. A wild Hollywood party? That little hayseed. That little hayseed wants to sow him some oats. <laughs> Let's eat. Hey, Jethro, wait. Now, you tell Mr. Kellums if he'll come down to my bank, he'll get invited to the wildest party Hollywood has ever seen. Oh, boy. That'll make him happy. And tell him it'll be a real orgy. Ah, uh, dog. Wait till he hears that. <laughs> well, what's an orgy? Uh, never mind, just tell them. Okay. You have never been to an orgy in your life. I know. I'm really looking forward to this one. Where is it going to take place? Well, it's up to you. You're the hostess. How do you do? Are you on your way to the wild Hollywood party? I sure am. Where's it going to be? In Mr. Drysdale's bank. Hot stick if you don't go. Let's go. You're a very lucky man to be a depositor of this bank. Uh, strictly speaking, I ain't. You're not. Well, Mr. Drysdale talked to me about it, but 
You see, I don't trust banks. But I'm sure that a man as handsome and worldly as you been to so many Hollywood parties, he probably drained the cup of life. Well, uh, dear. <clears throat> tell you the truth, Mom, I ain't had a good swig of that stuff at all. Oh. You don't suppose you could sort of sneak me into you? I'd sure be much obliged. I'm sorry. Mr. Drysdale's wild Hollywood parties are for depositors only. Pat, where are you going with this darling man? He's coming to the party, isn't he? I'm afraid not, Jeannie. Oh, that's awful. There are so many of us girls. Why, he'd be practically the only man there. Oh, he's so cute, too. I'm sorry, but he just doesn't keep his money in our bank. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm going home and get it right now. Well, if we can only be sure. Well, come with me, both of you. I'll show you. Hop in. <laughs> It worked. Now get those costumes and props. Tell the girls in the secretarial pool to report here for orgy duty. Oh, hi there, Miss Drysdale. Would you like to sit down and feed my baby raccoon? No, uh, thank you. I've just returned from Boston, and I'm trying to locate my husband. Oh, he was here, but he went back to the bank. I phoned the office. They said he was out for the day. Gee whiz, I'm awful sorry. <laughs> Hey, enemy, you want to go to a wild Hollywood party down Miss Drysdale's bank? Oh, no, thank you. You there. <laughs> Me, Mom? Yes, come here. <laughs> Please make it quick, I'm kind of in a hurry. Did I hear you say there's going to be a wild Hollywood party at Mr. Drysdale's bank? Yes, Mom. Regular orgy. That interests me. I'm sorry I can't invite you, but you see, it's Mr. Drysdale's party, and he kind of likes his women uh, uh, and, uh, young and flashy like them two in, in the car. <laughs> a couple of dandies? Here the bank is just crawling with fillies like that. I find this absolutely fascinating. I'm going to get your hopes up, but I'll put in a word for you. What's your name? Mrs. Drysdale. Forget it. He wouldn't want his mother there. full of grapes. How about you laying here for a spell? At once, Marcus Aurelius. What'd you call me? He was the wealthiest man in Rome. Would you like to sit upon the throne of Caesar? If it's all the same as you, I'd rather dance him girls. They are here to please you. Girls, dance with the noblest depositor of them all. <laughs> here. What? This is Mrs. Drysdale's on her way up. Thank you, George. <laughs> oh, Chief! Chief! Address me in the proper manner. Hail Caesar! <laughs> That's better. You may put a grape in my mouth. First, I had better put a bug in your ear. <laughs> Too late. You are about to witness the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Melvin <laughs> Drysdale. Judas, please. <laughs> how, how do you like the little party we're giving to welcome you home from Boston? I don't like it. And you're coming home with me this instant. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Too bad he's got such a strict mama. <laughs>
both. I know it's daybreak. You think you're crowing at some shitty woman? Oh, I'm sorry, old fella. I didn't mean to fly off the handle at you like that. But I didn't get one week of sleep last night, and I'm on edge this morning. <laughs> Go ahead and crow. I know it's your job. <laughs> about it or ain't you? Oh, I'm going to do something about it. Well, it's high time. I hope you realize it's all your fault. Oh, I do, I do. Good. Just one question. What is it that's all my fault that I'm going to do something about it? It's Shorty Kellums, that's what. He's been in and out of this house all night, one date right after the other, carrying on like a young tomcat. Well, Granny, I wouldn't fault Shorty too much. He ain't never been out of the hill. He just come down here to Hollywood to have himself a little fling. A little fling? Do you call driving up to our front door at 4 o'clock in the morning with a young woman sitting out there smooching? Do you call that a little fling? <laughs> you seen him, did you? With my own two eyes. I was shocked. Granny, I didn't think he could see out front from your room. That's got nothing to do with it. It was the most disgusting, disgraceful sight. I wanted to cover my eyes. Why didn't you? Cause I'd have fell off the roof. <laughs> you just happened to be sitting up there on the roof at 4 o'clock in the morning. Don't try to change the subject. Somebody's got to protect the morals of the young folks in this house. Do you want them to see Shorty's shameful carryings on? I don't reckon they did. Unless they were sitting up there on the roof with you. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm too tired to drive you home, but you go ahead and take the car. I know you got to get to work at the bank. Thank you, Shorty. You're welcome, Jeannie. I'm Gloria. Oh, yeah. Jeannie was my 12 o'clock date. <laughs> was that Patricia? <laughs> no, it was Helen. Patricia is the one I took home on the way to pick you up. Pick me up till 4.30 this morning. I don't like sharing you with those other girls. Now, don't go to griping, or I won't even put your name in the hat tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Please don't be angry. Forgive me, sweetheart. I promise not one more gripe. I wouldn't mind one more. But I promised not another gripe. I didn't mean the griping, I meant the grabbing. <laughs> oh, Shorty, please let me be your first date tonight. Well, let's see. I can give you 6.30 to 8.30. But that's so short. So am I. You looking for quality or quantity? <laughs> quality. I'll take it. That girl, I'll pinch you in. Oh, thank you, Shorty. And please don't be sensitive about your height. I ain't. I could have been tall, but I turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a riot. I'm mad about you, Shorty. We'll see you tonight, sweetheart. Angel doll. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> it's me, Granny. Up bright and early as usual. Beautiful morning. I'd have been down sooner, but I was doing my... Deep breathing exercise. I heard you pant. Uh, no. Had a good night's sleep, did you? Oh, yeah. I'm full of ginger. Oh? Was that her name? <laughs> you ain't full of nobody, Shorty Kellums. Shame on you, Tom, catting around all night. Now you come to the kitchen. Jed has a few words to say to you. Damn, Jed. Granny caught Shorty sneaking in, and she's really giving him the dickens. Where are they? She's dragging him toward the kitchen. I think she's going to whoop him. Maybe you best go outside. Hey, shall I cut her a switch? Maybe she's going to turn him across her knee right here in the kitchen. <laughs> here he is, Jed. Give him what for. You going to whoop him, Granny? It's up to your Uncle Jeff. Uncle Jeff, you going to whoop him? Wait outside, Jethro. Oh, let me watch. <laughs> outside, get fire. I used to watch when I got a whooping. I never get to have any fun. <laughs> 
naughty little rascal. Tell Jen where you was all night. Well, Mr. Drysdale threw this wild Hollywood party down to his bank, and well, all the girls just seemed to go crazy for me and wanted to know what I was doing after the orgy. What's an orgy? <laughs> oh, it's fun, Jed, fun. There's all these girls, real beauties, and they plays music and, and dances and drops grapes in your mouth. Get to last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, every one of the girls wanted to date with me, but there's about eight of them, and I ain't as young as I used to be, so uh, I only dated four. Keep going. Well, I took out the first girl from six to nine, and the second girl from nine to twelve. Just a minute. Didn't I hear you rousting around my kitchen about nine? Yes, Mom. I got a mite hungry, so I snuck a cookie out of the cookie jar. And I took out the second girl, and we danced till twelve. And then? Come back and snuck another cookie. <laughs> then I took out the third girl, and we didn't get back till four. She liked to never turn me loose. Then you snuck another cookie. Yes, Mom. And then I took out the fourth girl, great big rascal, liked to hug me to death. <laughs> and we just got home. All right, Jed, you heard him. I sure did. You gonna do something about it? I sure am. Come here, Shorty. Jed! You ain't gonna hit him with that skillet. Heck no, I'm gonna fry him some eggs. He can't keep going like that on cookies. <laughs> All right, step in here. All four of you, be quick about it. Miss Hathaway, I just found these four girls asleep at their desks. I expect disciplinary action to be swift and severe. See to it. The firing squad? That's right, fire the whole squad. <laughs> Perhaps you should hear their side of the story. I am in no mood to listen to their lame excuses. They were probably out all night. That's true, but we were entertaining Mr. Callum. He deposited $200 million with you. You told us to be nice to him. Yes, we did it for the bank. Let me point out the financial facts of life to you four sleepyheads. Chief. Now that Mr. Callum's $200 million is safely in my bank, there's no longer any need to be nice to him. Chief. <laughs> Yesterday, when we were wooing Mr. Kellum's account, you were four beautiful, alluring seductresses. Today, you are four unemployed gold bricks. <laughs> Out. Chief. What? What? Perhaps you should look at Mr. Kellum's deposit slip. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? Eleven hundred and eighty dollars. Eleven hundred and eighty dollars. What happened to the two hundred billion? Apparently, he didn't deposit his big money. Oh. Girls, ladies, beautiful, alluring seductresses. Come back, you four beautiful, bonus babies. You say bonus babies? That's right. Oh. There's a bonus in it for the baby who gets Mr. Kellums to deposit his big bundle in my bank. Oh. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, these girls are to have the day off so they can rest and catch up on their beauty sleep. Well, who's going to do their work? Yes. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> Hey, Shorty! <laughs> what you doing? Oh, Jethro. I'm sneaking my $200 out of Granny's root cellar. If she sees me, she'll give me the dickens again. <laughs> Did she whoop you? No, but she's mad enough to. Hey, why'd you take it out of the root cellar? It's all I got left. I put the rest of my money in Mr. Drysdale's bank. Shorty, is these them big dollar bills you had hidden in your mind for 40 years? You don't want to spend these. No, I don't want to, but I got six days tonight. I might have to blow a couple of these. Why don't you draw some money out of the bank? Jethro, as tired as I am, I don't dare go down there. Them girls will pounce on me like chickens on a grasshopper. <laughs> Tell me your secret. Why is all them girls after you? Well, best way I can explain it is some's got it and some ain't. I got it. <laughs> Trouble is, I just got two doggone much of it. Hey, Shorty, girl on the phone wants to talk to you. See what I mean? Won't give me no rest at all. <laughs> oh, hi, Shorty, darling. This is Gloria. Listen, I'll bring your car right over. I don't need it. But I need you, honey lamb. Every moment away from you is torture. Oh, 
Shorty, when you say my name, it just gives me goosebumps all over. In your case, that's a lot of goosebumps. <laughs> you big and jet. Uh, what's that, Chloe? You'd like to take me to Las Vegas? You'll love Las Vegas, Shorty. They have wonderful shows and big, beautiful swimming pools and the cutest little wedding chapel. <laughs> now, now, we'll talk about it when I get there. Oh, hi. <laughs> you big sneak. You're out to marry that rich little room. <laughs> That's a laugh. Can you imagine those two getting married? Yeah. They look like Mutt and Jeff. <laughs> For 200 million, I'll walk down the aisle on my knees. Oh, come on, George. Please, tell me your secret, huh? Yes, Rose. Leave me alone. I'm tired. I need my rest. I got a big night ahead of me. <laughs> hey, that's what's driving me crazy. Hey, look at the two of us. I got the size, I got the looks, I got the youth, and I got the girl. <laughs> oh, there he is. Rainbow. Dog baby. Come down, shorty darling. Girls, I'm kind of bushy. Why don't you entertain Jethro here while I start catch a little now? <laughs> yeah, here I am. Entertain me. <laughs> Get lost, kids. One side, you. Out of the way. Hey, hey. Uh, how about you entertain me? Later, I'll read you the comic. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Granny, darling, how's my favorite girl? Don't you touch me, you dirty old man. <laughs> it's me, Milburn Drysdale. You mean Milburn Orgy. It was you that started Shorty Kellum's down the primrose path with that wild Hollywood party. Oh, what? It was you that introduced him to them hussies that work at your bank. Granny, they're the nicest girls you'd ever want to meet. I just met for them, and they almost trampled me getting at him. Oh, you must be mistaken. Why, they're not aggressive or pushy. They're sweet young doves. <laughs> But your young doves is going south with an old rooster. Wait a minute. What's the matter with Mr. Cullums? Nothing. I'm just toward. Where are they taking him? Las Vegas. Oh, put him down. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't want to go to Las Vegas. They have gambling there. They do? Yes. Hot dog next to women. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> But you may lose. I generally do. Lucky in love and lucky at cards. <laughs> My bank is the best place for your money. Oh, I don't aim to draw nothing out of your bank. I'm going to take my big money to Las Vegas. <laughs> no, please. No. But Las Vegas sounds like fun. Gambling, shows, and swimming pools. But you can have all that right here, I promise. We'll bring Las Vegas to you. Sure enough. Right out beside Mr. Clampett's beautiful swimming pool. Las Vegas will be recreated just for you. Is this a stroke of genius, Miss Hathaway? With one brilliant idea, I kept Shorty from taking his 200 million to Las Vegas, and I've gotten back in good with Granny. Look at her win. <laughs> If this brilliant idea of yours is rated, it could be very serious. It's a calculated risk to land a $200 million account. It could mean a year in prison. Oh, stop worrying. I've got great attorneys. They'll get you off with six months. <laughs> <laughs> but with this brain, you don't think I rented this stuff in my name. <laughs> Graceful carryings on down at the cement pond. No, Mr. Drysdale asked me could he have a little do for shorty, but I ain't. It's shameful. There's machines down there that cheat you. That's where I got this wheelbarrow full of nickel. Well, oh, it looked like you got cheated. <laughs> well, I did. They promise you fruit, cherries, oranges, plums. But all that comes out of the darn things is these nickels. Hi, <laughs> Granny. Hold on, boy. Where do you think you're going? I'm going up to the swimming pool. Sounds like he's having fun down there. Jethro, you don't want to go down there. Why not? It's no place for a boy like you. They is girls running around with little short skirts, 
and there's other girls wearing nothing but skimpy little bathing suits, and there's some girls that don't now, even... Granny, I don't hardly think you're discouraging the boy. <laughs> All right. Jethro, I got a chore for you. I want you to count them nickels for me. Okay, Granny, right away. Oh. Now, where do you think you're going? You're going to count them out by the swimming pool. You count them in the parlor. Then I want you to take them to the market and buy that fruit I was cheated out of. Gee whiz, I never get to have any fun. The whole place is crawling with girls, and I wind up with a bunch of nickels. <laughs> you have got to do something about Shorty. He's acting plum local. Yeah, it does seem like Hollywood is going to his head of mine. Send him back to the hills where he belongs. Well, he just got here. Besides, he's bound to slow down pretty soon. If he don't, he's going to collapse. I'm a doctor, and I know that there's just so much that a human body can... Hold on. Where do you think you're going? Out to the pool to join the fun. You ain't going to have no fun out there. Why not? Because you ain't going. Uh, the dice for Mr. Callum, please. Uh, I left all my money in the house. Oh, well, allow me. Twenty dollars? Oh, what's twenty dollars between a banker and his biggest depositor? I kind of doubt if I'm the biggest. I'm only five foot three. A <laughs> <laughs> full arm for luck, girls. Now stand back and give me room. Old lady, look, treat me nice. Here comes Shorty with the dice. <laughs> Snake eyes, I lose. Oh, no, not not in this game. That's two the hard way. Pays double. <laughs> hey, Granny, I'm back from the market. I got your fruit. <laughs> Granny, Uncle Jed. Howdy, General. Hey, Miss, how about I join you out by the pool? I'm an awful good swimmer. I can stay underwater for two minutes. Try for five. <laughs> How about I join you out by the pool? If you like fancy diving, you can watch my swan dive. I would watch it if it flew backwards. <laughs> Back to the fun. Shorty, sh Shorty, hey, you can't keep going like this. It's going to catch up with you. You're probably right. You got to start tapering off. Good idea. Now, I can help you by taking some of them girls off your hands. It's a deal. How soon will you need me? About six months. <laughs> oh, uh, don't keep the girls waiting, Mr. Collins. <laughs> Jethro, where does Mr. Collins keep his money? Right there on the table. No, I mean his big money. Oh, he keeps that in the icebox. Icebox? Yeah. In the mason jar. Two hundred million in a mason jar? Oh, two hundred dollars. <laughs> you call that big money? I sure do. Look at the size of these bills uh, compared to those. <laughs> is, is this the money he took out of his silver mine? That's right. Had it hid there for 40 years. Oh. Why don't you get into your bathing suit, Shorty? We'll all take a swim. I'm sorry, girls. I got a rest spell. I ain't as young as I used to be. Oh, listen to him. He's the youngest man I've ever met. He sure is. Like, wow. What a husband he's going to make for some lucky girl. He's absolutely perfect. Now, wait a minute, girls. Let's be honest. Nobody's perfect. I got my faults just like anybody else. Not you, Shorty. No, it's just true. I got one overpowering weakness. So you like to gamble. So what? No, it ain't gambling. You like to take a little drink now and then. No, it ain't drinking. I know what your weakness is. You could never be true to your wife. But who expects you to be? You're just... Too much man for one woman. Uh, yeah, but that ain't the week. Well, what could it be? Tell us. Girls, step over here right away. I've got to talk to you. We'll be back in a minute. Party's over. That clown hasn't got 200 million. He's got $200. Oh. Get your things. Back to the bank. Girls, I didn't get to tell you my weakness. Checkers. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with an overpowering desire for a game of checkers.
Ain't he sure to kill them suitcases? That's right. He's leaving us. Going back to the hill. Tonight? That's right. He didn't say nothing to me about leaving. He don't know it yet. <laughs> I know you're might upset that Shorty has been kicking up his heels, running around with girls, staying out late. But he's a guest in our house, and you can't just throw him out. You're right, Ted. Maybe I hadn't ought to do it. Good. You do it. <laughs> now, Granny. Well, Jed, it ain't so much Shorty staying out late and running around with girls. He's old enough to know what he's doing, but he's a bad influence on Jethro. He's got him doing it, too. Jethro's up in his room. He is. Yeah, I just heard him in there taking a bath and getting ready for bed. Hmm. And here comes Shorty, home at 8, even 10 o'clock. Well, I'll be. I'll just hustle these up to his room so you don't have to apologize to him. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. And I was wrong to lose my temper. We all make mistakes. <laughs> treat on me, treat on rub. Here comes Shorty with the stuff. <laughs> Hollywood Shorty, that's my name. Hugging and a kissing, that's my game. <laughs> Come on, Jethro, time to swing. Two guys to feast, so ring a dig deep. Don't wait up for us tonight. Won't be home till broad daylight. <laughs> like I said, Granny, we all make mistakes, and I just made a whopper. <laughs> That sure sounds like you're getting the work out. I ain't never seen such wood chopping in all my life. I gotta give Jethro credit. Out all night and chopping wood before breakfast. That ain't Jethro. It's Shorty. Shorty? Why in the world is he doing Jethro's chores? He was out all night, too. Can I rest you a little bit now? Keep chopping. <laughs> Granny. I have a heart. Look, I got blisters on my hand. You'll have them someplace else if you don't get back to work. <laughs> Easy now, that rock salt and bacon rind smart. <laughs> hey, what's all the noise out back? Granny's making poor little Shorty do all of your chores. Yeah, she got him chopping wood. That's a terrible thing to do to a fellow that was out all night. It woke me out of a sound sleep. <laughs> Oh, Jethro, am I glad to see you. Did you chop all this wood, Shorty? Every stick of it. Granny's been holding that shotgun on me for two hours, making me work my fool head off. Will you take over? Sure, I'd be glad to. I'll watch it, Granny. <laughs> he makes the break, Bert. Give him both barrels. Salt his shanks for him. I will. As quick as he splits all that wood, I want him to spade up my tater patch. I see he does it. Jethro, after last night, I thought we was friends, pal. We is. Hop to it, pal. <laughs> I'll guarantee you one thing. Hollywood Shorty ain't going out tonight. The way you're working him, he'll probably go to bed right after he gets done eating supper. Correction, when he's done washing dishes. <laughs> when I'm through with that bushy-faced little banty, he won't want to go no place but back to the hills where he belongs. I feel awful sorry for poor little Shorty. Me too, but ain't no use arguing with Granny. When she makes up her mind about something, she ain't easy to talk out of. About as easy as talking a bulldog out of a bone. <laughs> the best thing we can do is to be extra nice to Shorty. Kind of make up for Granny. I'll do it, Paul. I'll be real nice to him. I'm tired of chopping wood, Shorty. I'll tell you the truth, Ellie Mae. 
If the warden's deputy wasn't holding a gun on me, I'd go over the wall. Jethro, you put that gun down and go chop that wood so Shorty can rest. Did you hear that, Shorty? Is that funny? I'm sitting there with a shotgun, and this dumb old girl cousin of mine thinks she can order me around. Is she dumb or is she dumb? You're dumb. D-U-M. Dumb. Don't mess with him, Ellie Mae. He's big as a moose and twice as strong. I appreciate what you're trying to do. No, no. No, no, don't, don't tangle with him. Oh, I can't look. You can look now, Shorty. Like I said, Shorty, she's dumb. Awful strong, but dumb. Don't you call me dumb. Well, you are. How do you expect me to chop wood hanging up here? Ready around? No, come on in, Shorty. Listen, Jed, I'm going down to Miss Drysdale Bank and draw out my money. How come? Well, this Hollywood nightlife's kind of expensive. Them four girls last night cost me a bundle. Was them girls from Mr. Drysdale's secretarial pool? No, that's what you call go-go dancers. Go-go? And before I knew it, my money was gone, gone. Well, Chief, these girls are here from the secretarial pool to collect their bonus. What bonus? The bonus you promised us for being nice to Shorty Kellens. You threw him in the swimming pool. You call that being nice? But that was after you told us he didn't have any money. We were being absolute doors, and then you called us aside, remember? Party's over. That clown hasn't got two hundred million. He's got two hundred dollars. Oh. Get your things. Back to the bank. Oh. Girls, I didn't get to tell you my weakness. It's checkers. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with an overpowering desire for a game of checkers. <laughs> okay. So I told you he didn't have any money. You didn't have to throw him in the pool. We settled for that. Gloria wanted to drown him. Girls, you've just used up your coffee break. Back to your desk. No bonus? No bonus. Cram. Oh. You know, you're a bit of a rotter, you are. I was counting on a few extra pounds to help me out. Well, you're from England. That's right, London. Oh. And you'd like a few extra pounds? Oh, I'd love it. Eat lots of starchy foods. Chief, that was the cheapest, rottenest, most despicable act I have ever witnessed. Thank you. I feel if a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing well. <laughs> Shorty, can I talk to you a minute? Kid, I gotta get down to the bank before Granny catches me. She'll put me to work. Granny's upstairs changing all the bed. She's gonna make me do the laundry. Well, she's gonna be busy for some time. All right, what you want to talk to me about? Shorty, that $1,180 that you got in Mr. Drydale's bank, that's your life savings. Yeah. Well, you don't want to spend all that on women. I don't intend to. I'm going to take the $800 I got for the Silver Dollar City Hotel and reinvest it. Good. I'm going to buy the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. <laughs> I don't think I'd count on getting that for $800. That's a big rascal. If I have to, I'll go to nine. Cash talk, Jed. Shorty, let's call Mr. Drysdale and meet with him. He's awful smart about money matters. All right, but I'm still taking my money out of the bank. Only put it in because the secretary is so sweet to me. Now they've turned sour, I'm going to get it back from the old miser. Miser Drysdale? <laughs> Mr. Drysdale? This here is Jed Clamp. Oh, yes, Mr. Clamp is. <laughs> what can I do for you? Could Shorty Calms and me come down to see you? Listen, I know you got a secretarial pool down there. That's right. You tell them four girls of yours not to throw me in it. They like to drown me yesterday. <laughs> Is that the reason you and Mr. Clamp are coming down here? Yeah. Well, listen, if, if I get them to call and apologize, will that satisfy you? No, he's coming down to draw out the money. What? The whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> You right down, Mr. Dry Deal. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, uh, don't take your money out. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I I'm sorry your friend got thrown in the pool. <laughs> Please, ma'am. <laughs> angels, beautiful goddesses, I beseech you, let bygones be bygones. 
Have mercy on an old man. All right, that's enough. Let's forgive him. Oh, thank you, thank you. I feel, I feel cleansed and purified in the gentle reign of your kindness and mercy. <laughs> Girls, angels, now that I have humbled myself and you have forgiven me, might I ask just one small favor? Sure, what is it? Well, just in case Mr. Clampett and his friend Mr. Kellams come to the bank, and mind you, it's a thousand to one chance, but <laughs> just in case they do show up, will you be nice to them? Especially to Jed Clampett. Who's Jed Clampett? He's the funny old geezer with the torn hat and raunchy clothes who talks with a hillbilly drawl. He has $90 million. Right. He's that distinguished looking gentleman with a casual wardrobe and darling rural accent. Please be extra nice to him. What's in it for us? Do we get a bonus this time? Of course. A bonus of my undying gratitude. Try again. The gratitude of the entire bank. One more time. <laughs> the satisfaction of having performed an act of loyalty. You're not reaching us, Governor. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hundred bucks apiece. Nice going, Duck. You just reached us. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. There he is. You live in doll. Dreamboat. Don't forgive me for liking checkers. <laughs> Girls, you missed me. Here I am. <laughs> Girls! Oh, beautiful. You know something, Miss Hathaway? Once you're branded as a checker player, you're through in this town. <laughs> to tell you, I never play another game of checkers as long as I live. <laughs> I never seen anybody carry a grudge like them four girls. <laughs> oh, Mr. Drysdale, I'd like to draw out my $1,180, please. Fine, fine. Oh, Miss Hathaway, take Mr. What's-His-Name down to the cashier and get him his money. <laughs> oh, just one question. What do you reckon one of these big Beverly Hills hotels would cost? Oh, 20 or 30 million? Dollars? No, cucumbers. Just my luck. Papa's got his whole farm in corn taters. <laughs> Girls, what if I'd say I never had played check? <laughs> this ain't my day. <laughs> Jed, tell me something. Is city women generally as fickle as them girls down Mr. Drysdale's bank? Well, I wouldn't know about all city women, Shorty. But I got to admit, them four is fickle. <laughs> Friendly, but fickle. <laughs> so, Hollywood Shorty, it ain't enough that you led Jeffro down the wrong path. Now you're taking Jed out. Hooting and hollering and running around with wild women. Randy, we just went down to Mr. Drysdale's bank to talk a little business. Oh, oh. since when did Mr. Drysdale start wearing lipstick? Hey, um, I think I better go wash my face. <laughs> You got something to wash, too. Me? <laughs> you. <laughs> you now rest a minute. Keep rubbing. <laughs> that lie soap of yours is awful strong. Maybe it'll wash your sins away. <laughs> it might could. It just took two fingernails. Granny? 
We got a washing machine out there. I got one right in here. <laughs> Hold the gun on him, kid. I'm going out back. Stake out my garden. I'm going to have him plow. <laughs> Quick as he's done ironing. I'll watch him. Kid, if I'm going to do any plowing, I want to do it back home on Papa's farm, where there's room for a couple of hundred acres of cucumber. Things are worth their weight in gold. <laughs> Shorty, speaking of your Papa's farm, that's going to be yours one of these days soon, ain't it? Yeah. You ever think about getting married and settling down back there? Sure. Trouble is, I doubt if any of these city girls would want to live there. I'll marry a hill woman. They make the best wives anyway. You had these city girls, this is all going much prettier. Mr. Joe, has Granny got you doing the washing? I'm afraid so, Ellie. Well, you just sit down and rest, and I'll do it for you. Oh, bless your heart, Ellie May. You're a sweet thing. Shorty? Besides being sweet, wouldn't you say that Ellie May is kind of pretty? Prettiest thing I ever seen. Well, she's a hill girl, born and raised there. Doggies, you're right. You take my word for it. Hill girls can be just as pretty as city girls any day in a week. And a heap better workers. And not so fickle. Yes, you done open my eyes. And I'll be beholden to you forever. Pow, pow, come here quick. What is it, Ellie? Shorty Kellum has asked me to marry you. <laughs> I found this here note under my door. My dearest darling angel of the hill, I have been a fool running around with city women. But now my eyes is open. And I know that you is the only one for me. Will you marry me and come live on my papa's farm? Yours truly, Donald J. Kellum, Jr. P.S. I would have proposed in person, but I couldn't get up the nerve. What should I do, Paul? You just stay out of sight for a while, darling. I'll talk to Shorty about this. Shorty? You mind coming over and sitting down for a minute? You and me has got something serious to talk about. <laughs> Jethro. Why don't you run get my ramrod and gun oil? I gotta make sure this old double barrel's in prime working order. Yes, sir. Jordy, the angel of the hill just showed me this proposal you slipped under her door. You ain't mad, are you, Jed? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty near as happy as she is. She liked it, did she? She can't hardly wait for the wedding. And she won't, won't mind coming back to the hills with me and, and living on Papa's farm? She loves the notion, Shorty. Pure love. Jed, this is my lucky day. I'm the happiest man in the world! Can't you leave me, Jethro? I'm marrying into your family. Is that true, Uncle Jed? Sure is. Shorty put it on paper and slipped it under his lady love's door. Congratulations, Shorty. Granny's going to make you a dandy wife. <laughs> yeah. Did he say good, good, good granny? That's what he said. Oh, Lordy. I slipped it under the wrong did it go to I blew it. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would. Yeah, I see you're about to leave. You wasn't fixing to run out on Granny, was you? No, 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 no. Oh, I bet I know. You're going back to the hills to fix up that old farmhouse for a honeymoon cottage, and then you're going to send for your bride. You took the words right out of my mouth, my mouth, my mouth, my mouth. Mouth. <laughs> Now, Granny, 
Leave him be. He's going back to the hills like you wanted. Wonder what made him decide to leave so sudden. I think it was something I said. 